Back then, I was way more famous than them, man. I was the rap man on campus. But I think they beat me out in the, the longevity of celebrity. Can't really compete with Angela Jolie. She's way up there. When you grow up in a place like Beverly Hills, you go to, you know, grow up around so many people who it's hard to, I mean, I think I, I lost in that category. But I'm comfortable with it. It's a good L. It was a good L. Yeah, everybody in their mind can believe they're the best person in the world. I mean, I hope everybody does. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. Every time I make a beat, I always, what, yo, I'm about to, I feel like I'm getting in a, stepping in a ring. You know what I mean? I'm like, rock, yo, I'm about to fucking, what I'm going to do on this machine right here, no one else is going to do. I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm doing what I'm, I, I psych myself out. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be your own, you know, you got to hype yourself up. Same thing with rhymes, any of that shit. You try to channel other energies. I know this shit is bigger than me. We're all just, you know, humans doing our thing. So you got to put your mind to it. And that's it. When we rhymed, when me and Scott rhymed, it was like, I guess we were kind of part of the kid era. It was like kind of a gimmick thing at the time, you know, crisscross. We, we were signed like as a kid group, kind of like under the solo assassin click. And then I remember our a and one day, Adrian Miller pulled us in the car. It was like, got the cassette. He was like, yo, man, you guys got a problem. See how chalk up another one when I drop a ton. Take your and see you bring the light like the sun. Yo, these two kids, man, illegal. Eric Sermon just signed them, man. You guys are going to have, yo, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, uh oh, oh. And they were hard, you know. Was, so, but I mean, down the line, maybe, I think it was like six months or something later, we dropped a single and went on tour. We hit Atlanta on the Soul Assassins tour, opening up for Cypress, House of Pain, Home Dubious, Hooligans. It was an outdoor show, it was like daytime, we had the first set, so we're performing. I looked to the side of the stage, and there was like this little kid with the all black certified suit on and like a ski mask over his face, you know, and I was like, whoa, you know, what was that? You know, was that? And then after the show, it was, Jamal, you know, we, we we got up with him and said what up to him, and it's like, oh shit, illegal. He came on the bus. We were playing Street Fighter. That's how you know how far this is. Street Fighter, Nintendo 2, I think it was. You know, playing Street Fighter, smoking mad weed, you know, and it was like showing us a bullet wound, and we were all tripping because he was, he was like a mini red man. He was like a shrunken to everything. Everybody, be real, everlasting. We're like, oh, he's L, you know, and um. I, he was like, I think he thought he was gonna just jump on tour with us or something. He was like, yo, after this, I'm gonna roll on tour with you guys. And it was real weird as a kid because I had to go talk to my road manager, like, yo, you know, like I didn't know how to communicate at the time, but it was, it ended up just all good. We, uh, everybody gave him a bunch of weed, smoked it up, and, you know, seen him years later. I think everybody grows. How you accept it or not is everybody's own experience. You know what I mean? What's real is real. You know, as you get older and things change, you know, it's good to be aware of that. I remember always seeing certain people trying to stay relevant when they were like getting out of touch. And that shit looked whack to me. It always looked bad when somebody looked like they were getting old and trying to stay young and relevant. I mean, you know what I mean? It just looks nasty. It's like there's, listen, Jay-Z is, again, you know, I guess that's a bad uh, example. He's like the top of the top, but he's not young and he's very relevant to young kids. So it can be done, but I think grown-ups who have kids and they ask their kids what's hot, and then they walk around the office telling people that now as if it's their opinion is disgusting to me, you know? But, uh, hey, I will never be that. I hope I won't, you know? It's good to, to, to do your surveying, but use your own ears still and know what, what's you and what isn't. So when I go to make a beat, I'm not... I'm just thinking whatever is inspired in me lately is what will... At the moment, you never know what it could be. And that's what I, I'll always be inspired by something, you know what I mean? One thing I always remembered was, like, the richest people that I ever saw as a kid, like, you know, parents, friends, or grown-ups, anybody, looked not 
the rich look broke. Like, that was one thing I always noticed was the guys who had the flashy cars or the things, it was like, I realized later that the ones who really had the money weren't really showing it. Hey, for that scorning. What do I do? I found it for that here. I always kept that in the back of my mind, like, wow, as a young kid, it was kind of like, huh? How are you going to tell me he doesn't have, you know, like my pops would explain it to me, like, nah, listen, that guy over there with the dirty shirt that wears the same jeans every week, he's got billions stashed, you know, so, uh, I mean, I named my company Quiet Money Entertainment, so, I mean, I think I, I kept that in the back of my mind, you know, but um, because I don't have big jewels on, I don't think you should assume that I have millions. So I don't, I don't know if it worked entirely. I got this part down, the, 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 the humble part. You know what I'm saying? No flash, never do shows for no cash. Keep it humble.